using a backing track is one of the best things you can do to practice. Now one of the most iconic softwares for creating backing tracks is Band in a Box. I would say that it's probably the most capable product that you can get on the market right now. Now it is kind of expensive but you can actually make very realistic backing tracks because what they do is they use actual samples from uh, live musicians. Now if you don't need to perform live and, and have, a, have a really nice backing track that you can create from a piece of software, there are some alternatives. But also even those alternatives, if you, um, if you process the MIDI file, you can actually get some very realistic results. And let me tell you a little story because a few years back I actually bought Band in a Box. I got it from eBay and I used it for a number of years and when I went to Windows 7 I believe it stopped working. So I thought well maybe it's time to upgrade. When I looked at the box the box didn't have a serial number so it looks like I bought myself a fake version of Band in a Box. I did start looking around for something that was a bit more reasonably priced and you can even find softwares that are free that do incredible. Today I want to show you one of my favorite paid products but it's very reasonably priced and this one is called Chord Pulse. So you can get the program Chord Pulse from chordpulse.com. Now if you've watched my videos on Mixcraft you will probably know that I really like simple software because when you're in the creative process you don't want to be messing around too much with having to figure out the software. So this program is one of those programs like Mixcraft that's very intuitive and very easy to use. I did have to figure out like how to make slash chords, how to make chords that were less than one measure and things like that. So I'm going to run through a, a process of just creating a, a chord progression in Chord Pulse. You'll see that right here there's a big uh, big button and that's that's your that's your first chord right there. So what you do is it's going to set up blocks of chords along this uh, window here. So what you do is double click that and here is where you select your chords. Now if, if I don't want to start with a C chord let's say I want to start with an A minor. I'll go over here click on A and I'm going to select right here AM. All right, so that's my first chord. Now I have this chord progression. I'm thinking, I'm thinking with a descending bass line. Now I want to go A minor, a G sharp. Then I want to go with a G, and then so I want a descending bass line. I want the chords to to not necessarily be those chords. So I have an A minor there, right? And and the next note below that would be a G sharp. But I don't want a G sharp chord in there. What I want to do is put an uh, I want to put an uh, an E chord. So what I'll do is I click on that space there, and I'll select the chord E. Now, if you want to hear the chord, you just click on the button there, and you can hear how it sounds. So it's going from here. It's going from an A minor. Now, what I want to do is I want to put a G sharp in the bass. You click on this bass clef over here, and what that does is it gives you another row underneath the chord notes and you pick the note that you want to play in the bass. So in my case I want to play G sharp or what it's got displayed here is A flat. Now let's let's hear how that sounds. So I'm going to go here. So right so it's going from it's going from there to there. In the next block I want to put a G. So I'm going to put right so that's a G and you can hear the chord by, by clicking on that. Another interesting thing here is that you can actually create different inversions of the chords. I'm going to go back to the A minor here and uh, I'm going to play. All right, so you can see here on the piano, you can see how that's playing right now. Now if I click, if I click that inversion, what it does, it, it puts the low note on the top. So you can go up so you can go keep going up several inversions. So what I want to do is I want to play I'm going to play that inversion then go to the next chord. I'm going to move that up to a different inversion. So you can see how you can you can change the character of the the backing track. Now let's do this. I'm going to going to move going to move that. The next chord that I want to put in here 
is I want an F sharp, but I want a, I want a D on the top. So what I'll do is here is I'll click the D and and then I do the uh, click on the bass cliff. Now here I, I want to have an F sharp or a G flat. So let's have a listen to that one. Oops. OK, I made a mistake there. So what I did was I actually clicked the note that I want in the bass, but I clicked on the wrong space. So I'm going to go I'm going to go back. Wait a minute. So I just want a D, just a D major chord, and then I'm going to put in the bass. So you've got to make sure that you, you click on the right line here. So I want a G flat. Let's have a listen to that. Right. So that's that will be the next chord. Now, if you don't like the way this is displayed, it's shown right now is as a flat. And if you prefer this to be sharps, then what you do is you go over here. So this is another thing that um, I was looking in the menus to find. But once you know where it is, then it's easy. So I'm going to change those to sharp so that so you see that any sharps here, we got F sharp there would be changed to sharp. So so let me just go into this one again. I don't think I put the bass note in there. I made the same mistake. All right. So what I wanted there was on this D with an F sharp in the bass. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this right now. OK, so I'm going to just try one more thing. Let's say I want to put make that into a seven, a seven chord, and then I'm going to I'm going to change the inversion on that. So D seven, and then I'm going to go I'm going to go down one more. I'm going to just put a straight F chord. Okay, I'm going to keep that I'm going to keep that inversion like that, and then the next chord I'm going to put an E seven. An E, an E7. So let's see if that looks E7, and then the next chord I'm going to put here is I'm going to put an A minor, another an A minor chord. Now, what I think is interesting here is, is if you make it an A minor, A minor two. Now here I'm going to show you some other some other little things. I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put an E. Let's make that an E seven. Right. Let's listen to that first. Let's say I want to divide this up and have several chords in there. What you can do is you can right click and say split. All right, so that's one way to do it. There's another way you can do this, which is you can grab the end of the chord and just drag it. So I can I can actually divide this up into four. So I'm I'm dragging that like that, and I want to put another two chords in there. Now let me just back up. What, let me just back up another step here because what you can do. Here also, I can right click and say split again. So in this way, I don't have to type in these these notes again. So I'm just going to say split. In this chord, I'm going to put a diff a different inversion. Let's see let's see how that sounds. Now one interesting thing here, you don't want to play all the way from the beginning. What you can do is just you click at the beginning. You could hear how that was it, it was putting those inversions in there, which which gives it makes it a little bit more interesting. And then what I wanted to put in here was I'm going to put a different a different note in there. I'm going to put a B7. Now here's another interesting thing about this. You can sample, there's a whole bunch of different grooves that you have here. Uh, uh, pop, rock, jazz and blues synth country world and some some extra things. So I'm going to just click on this one. And then while that's running, I'm going to go in here. Let's say we take a look at this. So now it's it's, it's switching styles. 
So I'm going to go through here and see, see if I can find something that, that might work. So you get a chance to try all kinds of different things. Let's try. Alright, so these, this is the rock samples. Uh, let's take a look at the jazz and the blues. See if there's something in there that might, that might work. Now, I could pick any of these because... How about this uh, jazz pop fusion? How about swing? Now actually the one that I found that, that I thought was, was kind of cool, this doesn't have a category for funk, but if you go over here into the extras, there's some here's some funk groups. Right, so here's a funk bass. And here's now here's one that's kind of uh, it's kind of close to, to what I was thinking. And this is the one that I'm gonna use. Now there's a couple of other things that I want to do with this to make this uh, sound a little bit more. Now what I'm going to do here is in this little part here, if I just play this. Okay, so in that second E7 chord, what I want to do there is I'm just going to add, I'm going to add a bass note, make this a slash chord. So it's going to be a slash, um, uh, a slash G sharp, okay? So that's going to sound like this. Right, so you, get the, uh, you got that note there. So let's see, let's hear how that sounds. So if I play that from here. So, so it kind of forces it to go down. All right, so that's, that's that part. Now what I'm going to do here is on the E7, you can actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split this in, in two. So I'm going to split that one. What I want to show you now is how you can add stops to your chords. So what I want to do is on these two chords here, these two E7 chords, I want to put stop chords. And on this one, I want to put a, a stop, but with a sustain. So let's, let's take a look at how you do that. If you go to the, the top left corner, there's a little symbol here and you click on that, then you have the option to set the drums, bass, and the chords to play in different ways. And uh, what I'm going to do is here, um, I'm going to put uh, set for a break. I could either set to break or just have it not play at all. So it's just going to play the first beat and the chords, uh, the bass also, I'm going to set for break and uh, set for a break there. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, automatically, what happens is it. This is modal because once you once you set this, then all the following chords will follow the same the same method. So if I don't change this in another chord, then it's going to play that um, going on from there. Let me just show you that. Click on this one, and we'll hear how it's going to set the chords following that E7 right there. So that could be a nice ending, but what I want to do here is I want to change this one so that the um, so that the notes will sustain. So let's just just do that for the for the bass and the chords, and let's just put a different uh, let's put a splash on there just just to show that uh, you have an option there to uh, uh, to change the symbol type. So let's have a listen to that. Now that's not exactly what I wanted. Um, what I really wanted there was, actually I didn't set the drums, so I wanted to have a break also there on the drums. So let's listen to that one again. So then in this next one, I'd like to turn, turn everything back to normal. So I'm gonna click, so as, as you see, I clicked on that and this is now set to normal. So what we should hear is it'll go back to the way it was playing before.
some stain there and then back to normal. So as you can see this is a very flexible and useful feature. Uh, I, I really like this. So let's have a listen now to the whole track. So if you found this useful, give me the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you'll get any of my videos coming up. I'll be showing you more about the about Chord Pulse and about some other alternatives to Band in a Box, which are really cool. So until that time, I'd like to say stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you soon.